Mountain Blade 2 Baron Lord is an amazing game, and I have over 300 hours plugged into it. And to be totally frank, most of those hours are actually with just the base game. But there are so many amazing ways to get even more content out of Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord that is included with all of the many mods that fill NexusMods.com. So in a video that has been, I think, quite a long time coming for you guys, a lot of you have requested this, um, I'm going to be showing you how to install mods for Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord, and then we're going to go through my top list of mods I think you absolutely need. Now these mods, uh, it's a list that's mainly curated among, upon um, adding features to the game that are missing and less upon over, complete overhauls or brand new content. Let me just kind of throw this disclaimer up front. There are still even more mods that I'm not covering in this video that you probably should investigate. And I'm going to show you how you should take a look at uh, some really great mods. Because there are just so many to talk about that really cover a lot of the missing things that you didn't even think you needed in the game. That I just think that you can really go down a deep rabbit hole with the mod community. And it's really one of the, the most gripping things about Mountain Blade, both 1 and now 2. So let's jump in here real quick on showing how to install mods real quick on nexusmods.com. And then we'll jump through my list. Here we are at the desktop to discuss a couple things before showing you the Vortex Manager on Nexus Mods. Now, before you do anything with the Nexus uh, Vortex uh, Mod Manager, you need to make sure that all of your mods are uninstalled, that you've manually installed. To do that, you're going to right click on Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, you're going to go to Properties, you're going to go to Local Files tab, then press Browse Local Files. This will bring up this nice little menu here. Then you're going to jump into modules. And I have all of the ones that are installed from the Vortex Manager. So I'm not going to delete these. Otherwise, you would want to kind of start fresh here and not have anything in this section that is not from the base game. And I think if, uh, if you just have the game freshly installed, this should be an empty folder. I'm not 100% for sure. Now, one other thing too is if you are dealing with mods and you're having an issue, um, and you're doing it manually, you're not using the Vortex Manager, which I extremely, extremely recommend. It makes things way easier for you to both update, manage, and install your mods. There's one thing you have to do with the .dll file. So for instance, let's go to Banner Paste, burn it up, I'm gonna go into bin, I'm gonna go into Win64 Shipping Client, and then there's gonna be a Banner Paste.dll. I'm gonna right click that, press Properties, and that box will pop up. And you'll see a number of tabs up here. You'll click security. And because I've already done something to um, remove this, um, you'll see a checkbox on here that says, press this checkbox to enable this DLL. And if you don't do that and you're manually doing this, it will not turn the mod on when you download it. So this is only if you're manually downloading mods and putting them into your module folder. But if you're using the Vortex Manager, you shouldn't have to worry about this, but I wanted to cover it real quick. So let's go into the Vortex Manager itself. But here you can see it's just a number of really nice things just right out the gate. You can you have the ability to check for updates and it'll update all of your enabled mods or ones you've installed or disabled, everything. It just keeps everything up to date. It's a really nice, easy way to deal with everything because you also have to then deal with it in the launcher in the game. So there's a number of complexities when you're dealing with mods with Bannerlord that this really tidies up and makes it a lot easier because you have a number of ways to deal with stuff. You've got disabled, which is a mod made Maybe I just turned off because I didn't really like it, or I've disabled it because it's not working too well with me. Whatever the case is, then you've got never installed, which is a freshly installed mod, which I'll show you how to deal with, and then enabled, which, I mean, self-explanatory. Then I can click this other tab here called load order. This shows me when I boot the game up what the load order is in the launcher. And that's something we're going to go over to in a little bit here that's outside of uh, the mod manager itself. But... When we look at the mod list, this is populated by going to Nexus Mods. And from here, we can choose all the mods we want to add into the game very easily. And I'll show you how we're going to do it. So remember how I told you that I'm going to show you how to pretty much uh, dive through some of the more popular and better mods out there? Well, when you select the, if you go to Nexus Mod homepage, uh, you'll see a number of games here. I select Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. And then you've got these tabs. Well, click popular of all time. 
You can click the ones from the last 30 days if you so wish. And a lot of the mods we're about to talk about are in this top list because they're so crucial and so helpful. But for instance, um, let's take a look at the mod lib, which is uh, one of the three mods that I'm about to talk about that you absolutely need to run any of the other mods we're going to cover in the list after this. So you would go ahead and here, let's go ahead and shut off that. Press this vortex button after you've downloaded the vortex manager. And if you've not downloaded the vortex manager, this will give you a, uh, a means to do so. And you press slow download that will then populate to your vortex manager. And it'll say this right here, never installed. You would click that button and it installs the mod for you. Then you have to click this button again to enable the mod. Same thing here. And I've used these mods before, but I wanted to show you guys how I turn them on so that you don't get this confused. So once you have got this, there are three things that you need to download immediately. And that is the fixed launcher mod. It's gonna really fix how all these mods launch into the game. You also need the mod lib. Um, this is just like one of those archive mods here. This is a modders resource mod, which provides useful code and an easy to use mod settings menu for modders to hook into. It's pretty much just like one of those additional library mods that almost every other game has in some way or another that it's just required for most other mods out there. Then your last one here is the mod configuration menu. And this essentially adds to the options menu a way to configure a lot of these mods out there. Uh, this way you can say, hey, for the uh, economy mod, I can tweak certain things here. So this is a really, really, really helpful tool. Now, while not necessarily 100% required, I still think it is one that you need to put in there so you can fine tune any mod on the list that we're about to talk about in the proper way. So once you have all three of those um, set in, you would pretty much just boot the game up. It'll launch the mod or it'll launch the game. The new mods are detected. Yes, go ahead and sort. Then you're going to go to the mods menu here and you're going to make sure that anything that has this TW icon, you press this little uh, series of brackets and drag it to the top. Those have to be the things that load into the game first. And really, once you do that, it's a matter of turning the mods on that you want in your game to best kind of suit the needs you have in, in mind. Certain mods need to be loaded in certain orders, and that's going to require some tweaking and looking at comments. And I can't 100% help out with that depending on the, the mod it is. But if you leave a comment in the comments below, I might be able to help you the best as best I can. So we're going to go through some mods that I think are just absolutely compulsory to really really increase your replayability and fun in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord until these are actually covered in full-time patches from uh, Tail Worlds, or if they just continue to be uh, constantly updated mods. These are some that are, are absolutely crucial in my mind. They're not really in any order of importance. It's just kind of a list of mods I wanted to go through, but let's jump into that list right now. So one of the very first mods I want to talk about is actually one that's really behind the scenes. You're not really going to see it do anything for you aside from enable you to load some of your campaigns or actually swap in between using mods and not using certain mods. That is called the save missing modules. All of these mods I'm going to have linked in the description below. So if you want to get up on them, go ahead and click those links and jump right to them. But this mod is very simple. It just simply is going to allow you to load up any of your previous campaigns that you've added mods into, updated the versions of, or swapped mods off of. Now I will tell you that some mods cannot be removed from a save game file. They embed themselves into the file because it creates dependencies. Uh, a really good example of this would be the Diplomacy Reworked mod we're going to talk about later in this video, and that will create a dependency and you cannot remove it from the mod. The majority of all the mods I'm talking about though do not create dependencies and you can remove them without any issues. So I wanted to talk about that one first as it's going to be a pretty crucial one that you need to download. The next big mod I want to go over is the Settlement Icons mod. Now, this one is pretty awesome because it kind of gives you that RPG style icon recognition that you get whenever you play most games. Now, by looking at this map at the very top level, we can see two icons. Shaken is a really good example here. We can see this little wreath 
and then we can, or olive branch or whatever you want to call it. And then we can see this little uh, question, or uh, that's not a question mark, that is an exclamation point. I swear I went to school. But those two icons denote two things. The wreath is indicative of a tournament, whereas the exclamation point tells us there are quests there. Pretty easy, pretty uh, uh, easy recognition. Now, as we kind of scoop in a little bit further, though, we get more icons. Now, on all the towns, we get their tradable resource. Cows, um, this should be pigs. Uh, this is clay. Uh, if I go over here, I get another icon. So we get fish, but this one means that this has a likelihood of having noble troops spawn here because of the influence of or power level of specific notables in this region. So settlement icons is not a very intensive mod, but it really makes navigating around the map a lot easier, especially if you're in the very beginning portions of the game and you want to look for, okay, where's my next? Okay, Omar is the next place I'm going to go to do a tournament. Or, hey, I want to get some noble troops. Well, I'm going to go down here to uh, Agalman. Or maybe I want to start trading fish from the northern portions of the uh, map down to the southern portions. Well, I can go to Skorin or Vorutsa. I'm sorry, I know I butchered that. Uh, but I can take that fish and bring it down over here to Sargo or Tizia. Well, yeah, Jalmaris, not Artesia, because that's going to have a lot of fish. But still... Uh, you get a really good idea of how to kind of navigate around the map using settlement icons because you don't have to memorize where all these locations are. The next mod is the Party Screen Enhancement mod, and I really like this one because it's one we've all really wanted for a long time just to be into the base portion of the game. Now, just to kind of be upfront about this, this is not going to save your formations. There's a separate mod for that, and I actually don't have it turned on, to be totally honest. So um, if you're looking for that in this mod, you're not going to find it. But this mod will allow you to do a number of really cool things. You have these three buttons up here. One, we'll upgrade all of our troops. So let's take, for example, our Sea Raider Chief and our Sturgeon Berserker, and also our Sturgeon Hardened Brigands. That button, and they're all, they've all had the upgrade button pressed, so I just have to press done. So pretty easy, pretty cool there. I also have the ability to sort troops. If I press that, I'll, I'll show you how we can get a little more granular with that. Lastly, we have Recruit All Prisoners. So as these guys convert, I can press this button to recruit all of them at once, which is quite nice. But if I click the Settings button here, I get an, ad an additional layer to party enhancements. And this will allow me to decide how I want to sort my units. So it's going to go in this order from Unit Type, Formation Type, Tier Type, or uh, Tier Level, then a Name. And if you hover over this little exclamation point, it tells me it compares unit based on their unit type. Infantry, archery, mounted. Ascending order, horse archers, cavalry, uh, archers, infantry. Descending order is infantry, archers, cavalry, horse archers. So you get an idea for how this is going to start sorting for you, which is really cool. So let's say now I want unit type. So this is going to go for me in a descending order. Infantry, archers, cav, horse archers. And formation type means that it's going to be going from, obviously, this is going to be going from um, low to high. Ascending order is low to high. Tier compare, <clears throat> obviously, this is going to go high to low. And then lastly, this is going to go alphabetically A to Z. So when I press the sort troops button, I'm getting infantry first, then archers, then cav. Because I don't have any horse archers. Um, and I'm getting my tier 5 at the top and then my tier 3 at the bottom. So this is a really simple mod. It's super light, and most of these mods are, but I think this one is super, super needed in the game, just as a base level. And on top of it, too, I've got all the readout of my infantry, archers, and cavalry in the game. Now, you can just hover over your guy, and he'll tell you how, how many... Oops, that's the actual settlement itself over here. You can hover over it, and it'll give you a breakdown of your troops. But those troops are organized by your formations. And if your formations aren't set in one, two, three, in that order right there, that's what infantry range and cavalry are right there, and it'll give you different readouts. So this kind of helps you get a really good depiction of what's going on in your army at a quick glance from just the party screen. This mod is a two-fold one because it's made by the same author, My Little Tan Tan. And I've showcased this before in my unit guide videos. But the first one here is the Equipment in Encyclopedia mod. This allows me to select any unit and then see all of the equipment they're using. Really easy, really nice. And all the variations on their equipment. Every single unit has anywhere from 
one to three variations of their equipment as well as some civilian equipment as well so it's it's a it's a nice little way to kind of see what units are really the best in certain situations and then the follow-up to this mod is the enable unit skills mod so when you take a look at the sturgeon shock troop he has 140 pull arm now what that means is that he will get innate bonuses from his pull arm skill in the base game those don't activate so my little tantan made a mod that will turn on those passive bonuses so if you hover over here because of his other mod uh, you'll see pull arm gets a let's just say 10 percent damage increase and an 8.4 increase pull arm weapon speed without this mod your units do not get those skills. So some of the things that make Sturgia, for example, a little bit stronger are the fact that they have certain skill bonuses, right? Like if I take a look at the Sturgian Berserker, he has 130 athletics um, and 110 uh, two-handed and one-handed. One -handed. Furthermore, into the Ulf Hednar, 150 two-handed, 150 athletics. Well, now he will get that 9% bonus to running speed and that sweeping 24% bonus to his damage and 9% bonus to his speed. So these two mods, they work very well in conjunction. You really only need one, like the uh, enable unit skills, if you don't really care about the equipment, but I think it's really nice to be able to really drill down on what every single unit is wearing to get a better idea of where you want your place in the battlefield or what specific units you even want to fill your army with. Character creation is a huge part of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. I'm sure you guys have all made multiple ones, but the detailed character mod allows you to really customize these guys in really fun ways. Um, so, for example, you just have voice, pitch, and height by default. This adds age, so I can have a very haggard looking old man or a baby, or whatever you really want to do. But you can also increase the weight on this character, or their build, so they're just like a real thick boy. So you can do a number of crazy things here. And looks like for this version of the mod right now that I'm on, I can't do... There's a way to actually create, like, do very specific, um, minute little changes. And maybe that's, uh, that's changed and I just didn't know about it. But I was able to do forearm, bicep, calf, quad, butt, hip ratio increases through these little sliders but this is a really great way to get a lot of really good customization out of mountain blade 2 baron lord that should be in it from the beginning but this is i think another one of those compulsory mods to add that extra layer of flavor if you have not been to the subreddit for banner lord banners you need to do yourself a favor because banner paste allows you to put custom banners back into the game. For those of you who don't know, they shut off this feature because people were pasting in the banners improperly and it was causing a crash in the game. And then they would be submitting those bug reports to the home office of Tail Worlds. So they decided to shut this feature down because it was superficially, uh, superficially creating a lot more work for them for no reason. But this mod will allow you to basically copy those custom banners back into the game. Uh, just as a word of advice though, if it does crash when you're going to paste in a banner, chances are you might have probably copied it in wrong. So do not submit a bug report if it does crash because like I said, you're superficially creating more work for them to uh, sift through. But this is a, a, an absolute necessary improvement to the game. The camera mod here allows you to get this really cool bird's eye view of the battlefield. Same way that you can anytime you die, right? You get in the same view here. But this is a nice mod because I can also press Q and let the game kind of play itself out while I watch from this cool view. And I can just press a button and jump back into my character. Um, so I really, really like this mod because you can get a good sense for how the battle's going mid battlefield and have it pause for a second here, which is very nice and I think pretty strong. Um, but more importantly, I can just press Q if I want to film some really cool b-roll for a YouTube video, or if I just kind of want to watch uh, my genius lack of tactician skills um, play itself out. Now the other portion of this mod is Bear My Banner, or at least other portion of this segment of this video is Bear My Banner. And Bear My Banner um, allows your units to carry your banner into battle. Now we will be getting an official banner release in Bannerlord, but the, the dev said that currently they're not very happy with the way the physics are working out, so they want to fine tune it before the ultimate launch of the game and the full release of banners. Uh, we saw banners in the Gamescom footage from 2016, 17, and 18. 
So this just kind of turns those on, and you can see the uh, the game kind of just play itself out with this sweet camera mod. As I watch these guys get killed, but nonetheless, I think this is a really cool aesthetic mod. It doesn't necessarily need to be in your game, but I think it kind of adds a nice layer of uh, visual appeal. So the last mod I want to talk about, and I, I had planned on talking about the Diplomacy Rework mod, but for some reason it's just completely crashing on me over and over and over. I'll talk about that in the But this last mod is the Equip Best Item mod, and it is super helpful. So if you take a look, we're in the trade menu for uh, Varvanapal, um, and we've got two sets of items to choose from, right? We've got our personal party, and then we've got the actual inventory of the city. And then we've got some other little things we can go through. Uh, we can see that uh, there's this button right here that tells me that there is a better horse that I can equip. You also see these padlocks here. That's going to affect the items. So if I click and unclick these padlocks, it basically is telling the, the mod which inventories to scrub through. With both of them unlocked, it's going to look through both my party and the city. This one locked, it's just going to look through my party. So, okay, well, my northern decorated male, there's a better item. I click that icon, and it immediately equips it. There's a better horse. Click this icon, and it immediately, this icon, and it immediately equips it. Or, I can press this icon, and every single up chevron will just get equipped. Now, there's another button over here that will equip the entire party, so all of your companions. So it'll scrub through all of my companions and see, okay, they're chest armors, uh, this guy can have a horse here, uh, so on and so forth. And you can actually say, okay, I want certain filters on this, or I can just lock it. So, oops, sorry, I pressed that button, but I can lock it so that it will actually not swap out the horse. Um, here's a good example. I can lock this guy. So I don't want him on a horse. So when I press this button now, it's only going to replace the items that I want replaced. Now, furthermore, I can press this button and it's going to replace them on all of my characters. Up Chevron. And I can also, of course, do this one more time by unlocking and basically shooting, choosing items from the city itself. And boom. They're all now fully equipped to the best of their ability, um, and you can put any kind of filters you want on there, right? Like I can say, hey, you know, I don't, I want this guy to have a specific type of cloak or something of that sort. So it's a pretty handy, look at that, just popping right out there now, aren't you? Um, it's a pretty handy mod that allows you to just quickly go through your inventory screen, especially when you hire a new character. You can just pop them into your inventory, uh, I'm sorry, into your party, and then just press that button to quickly have them scoop through your inventory and equip all their best items. It's a nice way to kind of quickly navigate through mass amounts of loot too. Like let's say you've gotten through a mass amount of battles and you're about to go sell. Well, you can go ahead and lock the city inventory and then just press this button and it's going to swap to all of your um, actual inventory items. I think equip best item is a really cool time saver, but I think also the big part of Bannerlord is fashion lord and making your you, your characters uh, look the way you want. So I do think this is a really great mod for saving time, but doesn't make you look as cool as you possibly can with your own kind of uh, personal touch. The last thing I would want to talk about before closing the video out is the load order of your mods. Now you can sort this, but don't do that. Like I said before, you want your total, your uh, the TW, the Tail Worlds mods to go first. But if you get settlement icons, it has to be the next mod that loads in, then the mod configura configuration suite, this is three uh, followed after that, then mod lip. Everything else after that should be just about okay to be in whatever um, configuration you want it. But I wanted to quickly point that out. And if you ha are having issues, chances are it's relegated to the load order and you should check that individual mod on Nexus mods to see if there's a comment or a suggestion on how to load. And with that, it brings our video to a close. So I did want to just kind of go through some of these really awesome mods that can help really increase your longevity in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Um, and for those of you that are maybe watching this after the most recent patch or just a patch in general, um, this might be a defunct list depending on what is added with that patch. If there's any great amazing uh, changes or overhauls to the existing systems in the game. 
And in addition, we don't really know how the coding rework and reframing is going to influence mods and the modding tools released down the line. So a lot of this might become, like I said, defunct information, but I did want to just show you guys how you can install your mods and some of the mods that I personally play with that have really made the game um, 10 times more enjoyable than it already was for me. But if you have any questions or you have any issues, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll troubleshoot the best I can, but I am not the mod master. The guy who's been helping me the most on mods is Surreal Beliefs. He has an amazing channel that goes through tons of Mountain Blade 2, um, Bannerlord narrative campaigns, as well as Total War narrative campaigns. So please check out his channel. He's actually the guy who got me into modding. So please, please, please go check him out. I'll put a link in the description below. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. And if you do subscribe, go ahead and hit the bell icon and turn on all notifications. so You can find out when I'm going to be streaming, doing any kind of game giveaways or any of my comprehensive guides. But have a good one and take care.